Hey reader friends, another story for you today, and this one is fiction. The title is Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. The author's name is Kelly Bennett, and the illustrator's name is Noah Jones. This book was um, copyrighted in 2005. 2005, and the publisher is Candlewick Press. When I'm reading this story, I am the boy's voice. So as I'm reading, listen to me as if I'm the boy speaking to you, okay? When I got Norman, I didn't want to keep him. I wanted a different kind of pet. Not Norman. I wanted a pet who could run and fetch. Or, you know, a soft, furry pet to sleep on my bed at night. Not Norman. All Norman does is swim around and 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 around. This is it, Norman, I decide. I'm trading you for a good pet. Norman doesn't move. Not even a fin twitches. Ugh, yuck. How can I trade him like this? No one will want a sorry-looking fish in a gunky bowl. So I clean it. And when I drop Norman into his nice, clean bowl, he starts dipping and flipping, flapping his fins around. He looks so goofy, I have to laugh. All right, don't think, just because you made me laugh, I'm going to keep you, I tell him. Tomorrow, you're out of here. Norman blows a stream of bubbles at me. The next day, I take Norman to school with me. I figure if I talk him up real good during show and tell, maybe someone will want him. On the way there, <clears throat> we see my friend Austin. Austin has a real cool dog and seven puppies. You want to swap one of your pups for Norman? I ask. Who's Norman? says Austin. My goldfish, I say. Huh? Oh, no. By the time I rescue Norman, half his water is gone. <laughs> Those little pups were having a drink, weren't they? I'm sorry, I tell Norman when we get to school. I'm really sorry. He just stares at me all googly-eyed. Finally, it's my turn to show and tell. Just as I start talking about goldfish, Emily shouts, Uh, Jenny's gone. Who let my snake loose? What? Does anyone hear the story of how I got Norman? Does anyone even ask to hold his bowl? No. They're all jumping and screaming and chasing the snake. Not Norman. He's looking right at me. Thanks for listening, I tell him. That afternoon, we go to my music lesson. As soon as it's over, I'm taking Norman back to the pet store. I take out my tuba and begin to play. I glance over at Norman. He's swaying back and forth to the music. Glug, 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 he mouths. Look, Norman's singing, I say. Pay attention, snaps Maestro, and try to play the proper notes. Maestro makes me stay late for extra practice. By the time my lesson is over, it's too late to go to the pet store. I say, don't think that just because you like my music, I'm going to keep you. 
Norman just glugs. Glug, 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 glug. That night, I'm sound asleep when I hear screech, 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 screech. <gasps> Yikes! What's that noise? There's something at my window. Then out of the corner of my eye, <gasps> I spot Norman. Hmm, he isn't scared. He isn't swimming around in circles either. He glugs and gives me a little wave. Ah, uh, I'm not alone. Together, Norman and I slide open the curtains. Ah, oh, it, it was just a broken tree branch. Huh. Thanks for watching out for me, Norman, I say. On Saturday, I take Norman to the pet store, just like I said I would. I look at the cats and dogs, and I look at the snakes and the birds, and the hamsters and the mice and the lizards too. I look at everything. I mean, they all look like good pets, but they are just not Norman. When I got Norman, I wasn't sure I wanted to keep him. But now, even if I could pick any pet in the whole world, I wouldn't trade him. Not Norman. Now he's got a bigger tank, doesn't he? A whole aquarium. And he's got a sign, Norman. One amazing fish. That's awesome. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that story.